Hey everybody, uh, Comic Crack. So, just a few things to talk about um, in this video. Uh, maybe I'll start with this first. So, understanding comics, the invisible art, uh, Scott McCloud. Um, I just finished reading it yesterday. So, Spiro and I are going to be doing our um, uh, conversation video about it. Um, it's going to be this week, Thursday. Um, I don't have my phone in front of me, so I'm not sure the date on that. Um, this week, Thursday, and it's going to be 10 p.m. Uh, Central Time, which is 10 p.m. here in Winnipeg. I believe that's 5 or 6 p.m. his time um, in the future. So it'll be Friday night for him uh, after work. So that's the plan. Uh, so far it's me and Spiro and we'll be talking just kind of about the book. Um, he's reading another book right now too that I'm kind of curious about so maybe we'll get, a, get into that as well. Um, yeah, and just kind of our general thoughts on this and knowing us we'll probably talk about some other stuff too. Uh, there's a whole whole other world that we're into so maybe we'll talk about some uh, our plans for the year as far as like uh, indie books go and stuff. Um, so we'll call it an underground chat. So Thursday it'll be on my channel at uh, 10 p.m. Central Time. Um, second thing I wanted to talk about was uh, I've been experimenting a bit with um, some ideas for some mini comics as I think I said once before. Uh, getting together a book of these battle drawings that my son Mr. Tom and I have been doing and maybe putting them together in a little book. Um, I found this, I'd done this a little while ago. It was just kind of like a little mini art book um, that I did in color. So there's the there's the pages there. And then the back cover. What's cool about this, let's see if I can do it one-handed here. Uh, sorry, let me let me put you down here. So what's cool about this is that it's actually right now that I've unfolded it, it's one it's one piece of paper um, with a slit cut down the middle two panels. So from there to there, and then folded. Uh, you can see there's the slit there. So that's just folded in half, and then when you squeeze it in half. It folds up into a nice little book. Um, the thing that I had, the, the mistake I guess that I'd made with this is I, I drew everything too close to the edges. Um, so when I went to print copies of it, um, it couldn't do all the way to the edge, like the bottom edges and stuff. So stuff was getting cut off. So what I experimented with was um, shrinking it a little bit. So as you can see, there's the there's the final kind of thing. I just did a black and white copy of it just to see how that would work. Um, I prefer the color myself. but um, And then that seemed to work. Shrinking it like that. I love the idea because originally what had happened was on the back, I don't know if I have it on this one. No, I don't. Um, I had a bigger image that was kind of like the, the back side of the paper that I thought would be kind of neat to make a mini comic with um, images on both sides. So, um, I hesitate to show, I, I don't want to show what I've been working on, it's kind of a surprise uh, for some people. So, um, but that's the plan, I'm hoping that this will work out and um, I'm going to have some of those to send out to some people, uh, plus some other people are going to get um, this other little mini comic thing that I'm working on. So there we go, and then the, the Jaden one, so I was thinking maybe doing the same format for this. I don't know what I'll do for the Jaden one. Maybe I'll do like a digest size, uh, Mr. Tom one rather. Maybe I'll do a digest size version of a uh, of our battle drawings. Um, yeah, so there we go. That's, that's kind of what I've been working on a little bit. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about today was... Um, if you guys, I, I know I've said it before, and, and you know you hear a lot of the same names from me um, when it comes to people's videos that I really, really like. Um, but I, I, I always feel like they can't be stressed enough 
and um, Earl Grey has done some amazing videos and the one that he had just the other day, uh, Jacques Tardy, was spectacular and if you haven't watched that one, really, really great stuff. Um, I've always been interested in Tardy myself and um, I just thought it was a really great look. Some of his stuff has been reprinted. Actually, a whole bunch of it has been reprinted in English in some nice hardcover editions. I've seen them around town here. Um, just maybe one, maybe two places, but one for sure. He kind of specializes in getting in some really, um, not just like other items besides like the, the mainstream comics. He has a really good kind of graphic novel section and hardcover book section and um, he had in the Peanuts book that I got for Christmas actually he had that in first in town kind of thing. So I just kind of wanted to talk about some of the comics that I have focusing on artists from around the world but more importantly um, I wanted to, I know I've talked about this title before but it seems fitting that I just kind of mention it again. For those of you that are that live in North America, Canada, United States, um, obviously specifically Canada for me. Um, hunt this title down if you're interested in any of the European artists. Uh, Dark Horse, Cheval Noir, and let's see, uh, the front is a Dave Stevens on this number one here. Um, and it says 1989, you can't quite see that. Uh, let's see. I don't fully understand how to focus this, uh, sorry, hopefully that's focused up there. Um, I'm still kind of getting used to this camera when it comes to actually shooting and coming in and out, but um, you can thank uh, ETA Nick uh, for this, the, the Nick view basically. Here you go Nick, oh I wish it would, <laughs> I wish it would focus, um, there you go, anyway. So these books I found pretty cheap in a variety of places. I now, the comic shop that I get my subscription from and they get my pull list from, they've got, they've got pretty much the whole series now, but the thing was that they're a little more expensive there. Um, and I found a good chunk of these at like flea markets and stuff. Some I found for like a buck a piece kind of thing. So I was kind of always holding out to find them all for a dollar, but I don't think that's going to happen, like each issue for a dollar a piece. And originally I only wanted to get the first 10 just to kind of read a little bit about them. But I love them so much that I'm going to get the rest. I'm just going to show you, I've got a whole bunch of them. I've got maybe, oh I don't know, 15 issues now or something like that. Um, but I just wanted to show you a few. Uh, so let's let's start with number one here. and. I'll just kind of quickly flip through it. I know that I've flipped through this stuff before, but I know not everybody, especially newer subscribers and things, there's not always a chance to to go through everybody's back catalog of uh, videos. So if it's a repeat for some of you, I apologize. Um, so here we have uh, uh, Jeff Darrow, and Jeff Darrow did a lot of, uh, what did they call it? like incidental kind of illustrations throughout uh, the book and throughout most of the books that I have in this series. There's another one there. So it says inside, Cheval Noir number one, uh, August 1989, uh, Dark Horse Comics. Um, and it's a really, the reason I'm bringing it up is it's a really affordable way to, they, they serialize a lot of the stories, um, but it's a really affordable way if you don't want to splurge for a hardcover that maybe you end up not really digging as much, um, this is a good way if you can find them cheap. And even if you can't find them cheap, I think my comic shop might have been selling them for $4 a pop, maybe? Three or four bucks a pop, which is still less than cover price when they first came out. But then it gives you a chance to kind of sample some of the work and continue if you want to. So in this one is... Uh, Lone Sloan, Philippe Joulet, uh, Fever in Urbican by Shootin, Lettering by Rachel Rodrigo, Fred and Bob, and there you go, Adele and the Beast by Tardy, um, Angel Fusion and Rourke. So, um, Mr. Gray, if you're watching, this Fever in Urbican is the one that I had mentioned to you in a uh, in a message I had sent, and that's the artist's name. I, I, I'm trying to remember, I haven't rewatched your introduction video to your comic layer there, your man cave, 
Um, I'm not sure if you had mentioned him specifically. I know that you had talked about some artists who were really involved in like architecture, um, I believe is what you were talking about. Some of their styles was really kind of focused on architecture and that's the thing that really impressed me about. It was a fantastic story, first of all. Um, and this was the same story that I had raved about in the earlier videos. But the art in it was incredible. So let's just skip to 14 for a sec. So here we go. Um, the other good thing about it, they always give you a little bit of uh, an intro to the artist and the work that, you, that they're reprinting. So there we go. And then chapter one. And like I said, they serialize the story so you only get a, a small piece of the story. Um, I absolutely loved this story so much. Um, first of all, his style is phenomenal. I don't know, now that I've seen the, the Tardy video from Earl Grey, um, the Adele stories were in color. In this magazine, everything is in black and white, um, which is good. I mean, I, I kind of wish it would be how the artist had intended it, but it's really, really nice to just see the line and to focus on the illustration itself. Um, there it is, that word again. Me focused with the beauty of the line. Um, so this cube starts taking up the city and they have to adapt because they can't stop it from growing and people start accepting the cube, how it's growing into their city and becoming a part of their city. They start adapting to their new cityscape. Um, yeah, and I mean, just, just look. <laughs> I, I, I wish it would focus properly, but there you go. You get a little bit of a, an idea of it there. It's just really, really impressive illustration work in this story. So Earl, if, if you do know this artist um, and if you do have some of his stuff I would love to uh, by special request request a video looking at more of his work I mean either way I'm gonna try to hunt it down myself um, but this is all I have of his so far and I think in the later ones that I'm starting to pick up now of this series I believe they have another one of his stories reprinted in it too but like I said I'm, I'm, I have a lot of gaps um, once I get past like number 15 or so of this, um, they're kind of sparse. So anyway, that's a look at that. And then we'll just go, I'm going to put, no, I won't put you down. Let's see if I can do this here. Here we go. So a little kind of history on Tardy. And then we're presented with the Extraordinary Adventures of Adele Blank Sec, Adele and the Beast, Chapter One. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful page. So, and then here's a look at the interiors of this one. So, the pterodactyl tail. I'm assuming that this was her first story. I, th I think that's what he had said when he was kind of walking us through the books, like the first Adele story, anyway. So there you go, there's a sample of that. Uh, beautiful stuff. Then some other artists that I, I, I'm not familiar with. I mean, all the artists in this series I'm not familiar with, uh, except for Jeff Darrow. I mean, I'm familiar with some of them now, but you know what I'm saying. Um, it's a good adventurous book. Um, I know that uh, La Raza has been talking a lot about uh, her dislike of, uh, not dislike, that's too strong, um, disappointment in some of the main, the, the big two comics. So I'd really suggest this book to her as well. Uh, have a look in your shops and see if see if there's anything Cheval Noir for you because I think you'd really appreciate it as well. Um, and then I wanted to show you this one. This is issue number 17. So now we've come to the next of the uh, Tardy stories here. As you can see by the cover, sorry that light there. It's uh, getting darker out so I have the overhead on. So we'll just zap to the inside. Um, and then this is Griffin, Griffith the heck is this artist's name? Bill Griffith, I believe. 
doing some illustration, taking over for uh, um, our friend Jeff Darrow. Uh, oh, Rick Geary, sorry, Rick Geary. Um, it says that Darrow did the back cover. So in this one, who are some of the names we have? Sorry, did I mention this is issue number 17? So this is now April 1991. So The Mad Scientist by Tardy, Brian Bolland, Frog Eating Bat, Rourke by Andreas, The Forever War, The Great Power, uh, Voyage to Italy, Adrift, The Eyeball Kid. So that's the Eyeball Kid story there. Uh, let me just have a quick flip. Oh, and then even in this one, there's still the, I guess there was some trading cards included. Still included, kind of nice. Uh, let's find the tar detail again. Here we go, it's the first one. So The Mad Scientist, chapter three, is in book 17 here. So again, reprinted in black and white. So nothing more to really say about this one, uh, other than definitely check it out. Um, and then the three newest ones that I got, new as in maybe two months ago now. Um, so I haven't really, I haven't even rebagged them yet or anything. They still have their old bags. Issue 21, um, 22, and 23. And that's the highest that I have now, number 23. So let's have a quick look and see who's in this one. Oh, hey, there you go. Angus Dog in the World by David Lynch. Andreas again. Tardy again, Mummies on Parade, Phil Elliott, Cozy, Rick Geary again. Illustration on back cover. A little bit of Lynch. Yeah, I haven't even I haven't even leafed through these ones yet. Enough said. Oh. Oh my goodness. Oh. It's an homage to me. Wow. Oh, oh goodness, you, you, I'm blushing. So there's that, let's see if we can find a quick bit of David Lynch here. There we go. Angriest dog in the world, which I think then got, um, compiled into a, a graphic novel or a hardcover. And the stories in this one, more dog, more Andres with that Rourke, more Tardy, more Rick Geary, Cozy, and that, so that's that issue, and just fire through the last one here. Same names there. So there you go, there you have it. Um, like I said, a repeat for some people, but uh, hopefully still interesting. Cheval Noir, um, highly recommended.